before we can decide what music we should be playing in church, we would do well to study music. That's right, to biblically study music, to figure out what is it? What is the point? How does the Bible define and describe it? What does the Bible say its usage is so that from that, because I don't know if you know this, but the Bible, it doesn't make noise when you read it. So we don't read the Psalms and hear the instrumentation, but maybe, just maybe, by studying the theology of music, we can figure out what our instrumentation, what our music should sound like today. Dr. John MacArthur preached a sermon on this subject. And he started out by talking about four misconceptions about music. This is misconception number one. The first misconception is that music is worship. That is not true. Music is not worship. They're not synonymous. Music is music and worship is worship. But typically you hear people to say, today say, we're going to worship, and then immediately that is essentially defined by music. Music is not worship. Music is a means to express worship, but it is not worship. Worship is the heart going up toward God in gratitude and thanksgiving for all that God has done. That's worship. Worship is acknowledging God to be who He is revealed to be in Scripture. It is acknowledging what God has done, and in particular that He has saved us, redeemed us, given us eternal life, and it is expressing gratitude to God. There are many ways to do that. Worship can be spoken. It can be prayed. It could be silent reverence. It could be gulp dancing. But it could also be through music, which is not worship. Dr. John MacArthur drawing a fine line. Worship is us ascribing to God who He is, thanking Him for what He has done. Music is not worship. Music is the device. It is the carrier of our worship, but it by itself is not worship. Misconception Number two. A misconception is that music motivates worship. Music induces worship. That's not true either. That is not true. It gives expression to love. It gives expression to adoration. But the motivation for that has to come from somewhere else, not from music. Music enhances and enriches, but the motive for all of our songs is not a sound, it's a truth. That is where our worship should come from, knowledge. That causes us to desire to sing. It is truth that motivates worship. It is not music that induces worship. Permit me to do my impression of a secular concert. You've seen them before. The music is thumping and bumping. The whole place like this. And now my impression of a Christian concert. And you go, wait a second, it's the exact same, exact same thing. And I say, wow, my calves are working. Exactly. You see, when the secular music gets people amped up, they desire to look like they're worshiping, but they're not. And the same thing is true for Christian music. It can get people amped up. It can get them jumping and dancing, but that is not worship in and of itself. Worship is not merely jumping. Jumping could be an expression of our worship, but our worship is our heart expressing itself to God and worship is merely the vehicle, but it is not the thing that causes us to worship. Truth, and only truth, can do that. 